this entitled mum thinks that when someone babysits their kids, it should be for free. But the reason they give is beyond ridiculous. Happy birthday if today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. So I am one of five kids. The sibling I will talk about is one of my older sisters. ES1, 24, has three kids. A four-year-old, a one-year-old, and a two-month-old. ES2, 22, has a one-year-old. Mentioned because I watch her kid too, along with the others. I recently graduated high school. I went to a continuation school the last couple of months of my senior year because I was behind on credits. And at this school, I worked at my own pace. So I was able to finish classes at a faster rate. I had a deadline that if I didn't finish my classes on time, I wouldn't graduate with my class. I had three classes left to finish in two weeks, so it was really stressing me out. On the first week, ES1 had her son, and I had to take a day off to watch my nieces because no one else could watch the kids. Then literally, as I was getting ready for school the next day, she called me and said I had to watch the kids again. I was upset. I didn't even get paid for this. The next week I had several mental breakdowns because I only had five days left to graduate. Thankfully the vice principal was generous enough to give me till the day before graduation to finish my classes. Thank goodness, I graduate with my mental health barely intact. Now my family had planned on taking a road trip to Oregon to visit family in late July. I graduated in May. My mum thought, since there really was no point in getting a job, then telling them, hey, by the way, in a few weeks, I need a whole week for vacation. She thought I could help my sister until we got back from Oregon for me to look for a job. I agree really not having a choice. I help her for five weeks, because when we got back, I helped her for like a week more whilst I was still looking for a job, and have not been paid a dime. I get a night shift job that requires me to sleep during the day. Last Monday she texts me while at work saying, I already told mum but I need you tomorrow in the morning. I have an interview, but I need to sleep for work. I need you to watch the girls. I already asked mom and she said it is fine. I agree seeing I really have no choice even though I should have been the one she asked first, not our mom. I'm 18 years old. I get home from work around 3.30 a.m. I have to go to her house at 7 a.m. and I come back home around 1.30 a.m. I roughly had about six hours of sleep for my shift the next day. She then tells me while I'm at work the next night that I need to watch the girls again on Friday because she had a doctor's appointment. Now I have the weekends off and I was super ticked because I had plans that day and she responded with, too bad, I have no one else to watch the girls. Your nieces are more important. So I watched them. And this past Tuesday, my mum had a family dinner night. She came over with all her kids and after dinner, we all sat in the living room where I talked to her and Abby. I need to talk to you. ES1 and ES2, from now on, I will charge both of you $10 per hour per kid. I cannot lose any more sleep. This isn't like high school. I can't just drop everything I'm doing to watch the kids. I have a job now and I need to help around the house. My stepdad is sick and isn't working as much, so I picked up a few bills. I get paid $14 an hour at my job. Me asking for $10 for the kids is the lowest I'll go. I'm not taking this anymore. I'm not at your disposal anymore. I have my own life now. ES1 goes ape. Are you freaking crazy? I'm not paying you to watch the kids. Why do you need that money? I need that money for rent, blah, blah, blah. I'm not the one who had three kids back to back. That's not my problem. I have my own life. You're watching the kids for free when I need you. This went on for about an hour before she left in a half. A few hours ago, she texted me saying she needed me next week. I think it's reasonable to think that there are certain times when you'd expect family to be able to give you a hand if they can. However, the sisters in this story are basically treating their younger sister like a slave. They want her to do work for them for free. They're basically saying my time and my life is more important than yours. And you just know if the youngest ever has kids, there's no way the older sisters are going to babysit for her. They'll make up some lame excuse. It was a normal Saturday night and I was working at my job. I work at a major retail store. Not going to say the name, but it rhymes with souls. The rush we get on most Saturdays had calmed down and my coworker and I were just straightening the floor. She works the registers while I'm a floor person. We were folding down the floor when our entitled mum, entitled kid, and dad came in. Now for context, our store has two wheelchairs for customers who need them to use freely. 
I have a particular protective stance on them as my sister always uses one on her bad days due to her MS and people like to misuse them. And here's where our fun story really begins. EK was a boy of around 12 and had literally ran into the store all smiles and laughs. Then his eyes zero in on the wheelchair. He goes to grab it. I make my way over to the family and stand slightly in front of the wheelchair. Hello and welcome to the store name. My name is, can I help you find anything? The kid backs off due to my arrival, while the parents tell me they're clothes shopping for EK. They grab a cart and all head off toward the kids section. I go to check on the rest of the floor and to fold where needed. It was a little over five minutes later, I watched the kid zoom back, snatch the wheelchair and take off. I'm ticked and was ready to chase after him, but a lady needed help getting something off a mannequin, so I put it out of my mind. An hour later, my coworker needed to take her break and I offered to cover her. She hadn't been gone two minutes when who comes to check out? Yep, E, M, E, K, and D. But you know what isn't there? The wheelchair. I'm mad. Not only did he take a piece of equipment he honestly didn't need, but left it gosh knows where in the store. I'm not about to let that fly. Hello, did you find everything okay? Yeah, but your kids area is really messy. Liar. The other coworker who works in that department is beyond OCD and never lets a mess sit. But I ignore that and press on to what I really want to know. I look at EK. Where is the wheelchair? EK confused. What? The wheelchair. I saw you take earlier. Where is it? If it's not in use, it has to be by the front door. His eyes go wide. He knows he's caught but EM doesn't get it. My son doesn't know anything about a wheelchair. He isn't a disabled person. He's actually useful. Wow, I can't believe she just said that. Neither can dad, it seems, as he looks at his wife with a mixture of disgust and confusion. Honey, EK was riding it. Be quiet. Okay, so now I know what's going on. Clearly she knew her kid had used it, but didn't care about where he left it. I looked back to EK and with my stern but still friendly customer voice, I tell him, please go bring it back. We have customers who come in that have to use them to get around. EK just nods and scurries off back the way he came. Dad doesn't look irritated, but EM is mad. That was not your job to tell him what to do. Ma'am, my job is to ensure that all customers have their needs met while they are shopping. I can't do that if the crucial equipment for our handicapped customers is not where they can be easily accessed. EM giving up on trying to act clueless. He was just playing with it. He wasn't hurting anyone. Wheelchairs are not toys, ma'am, and he shouldn't be playing with them. She goes quiet, obviously trying to come up with something clever to throw back at me. Failing that, she goes back to the classic Karen response. I want your manager. Me shrugging and calm as heck as my manager on duty is a no BS type person. No problem. Then you can explain to her how your child was misusing store property and you were trying to lie to me about him doing so. If you really want to push this further, I can ask for her to look at our security tapes. Before I can grab my walkie, dad puts his hands up in a defensive motion. That's not necessary. I apologize for my son and wife. Turns to EM. Just stop. She's only doing her job. And I told you back there that EK shouldn't have had it. He was just playing. Dad and me at the same time. It's not a toy. By the time I'm finished bagging their items, EK has come back, pushing the wheelchair back to where he had taken it from. He rejoined his parents and said a quiet sorry to me before they all left the store. The EM glaring daggers at me the whole time. I told my coworker when she got back and we both had a laugh about it. Moral of the story, don't play with wheelchairs. You can kind of understand a kid messing around and playing with something like a wheelchair. If you're a young kid, you're not really thinking about the consequences of you playing with it. It just looks like a fun thing to play with. The mother on the other hand, she definitely knows better. The only reason she probably didn't care was that it shut up her kid for a bit while he played with the wheelchair so she could do some shopping. At least the kid has some hope with a decent dad there. This happened a couple of weeks ago. I wanted to save my phone battery for navigation and calling in an emergency. And as it happened, I didn't have data signal at the time. I was chilling in my tent at about 5 p.m. listening to Simple Minds after cycling 130 kilometers in the rain. It had been about 12 Celsius all day. I was wet through and still warming up in my sleeping bag with only underwear on. The campsite is about half full. I hear talking, but don't pay attention until my tent shakes I hear this. Hey, you in tent 16, can you move? Me removing my earphones. Sorry? Can you move your tent? We want the spot next to the bench. 
I'm sorry, I've got all my stuff out and I'm exhausted. I picked this spot and I'd like to stay here. The guy told us to pick whatever spot we want and we want this one. Edie began unzipping the tent and pokes his head through as I'm putting on some leggings. Don't come into my tent. Step back, please, I'm coming out. I step out of the tent and see all five of them standing there. Tide Kid 1. Let's just go over there. Tide Kid 2 and 3. Yeah, that's a nice spot. No, we want the table. Well, I'm sorry, but I got here first. I've had a miserable day of weather and frankly, just want to go back in and warm up. You're welcome to use the table, but I'm not moving. No, you are moving. What makes you think I have to move for you? The man told us. You've been here longer than us. It's only fair we get time in that spot. This is ridiculous. I am not moving. I decide to get into my tent whilst saying something about being able to have them kicked out for inappropriate behavior. I zip up my tent and then EM begins taking out the pegs whilst ED takes out a pole. The kids are telling them to stop and that they'll get kicked out. Kids are probably between five to nine. Enter guy one and two and a girl. Hey, you can't do that. We've got an attendant coming over, please stop. EM says her spiel about wanting the table. I'm out my tent again by this point with more clothes. Give back my poles. No. So you're a thief now too? Soon you can be arrested. I've got signal, want me to phone the police? Go ahead, I'm within my rights. Guy too goes behind and snatches my pegs. Enter attendant. I need you and your family to leave the premises. If you fail to or show any further aggression, I'll be calling the local police. Call if you want. We have the right to want this space. Yes, you do. But you need to keep that to yourself and you need not to harass our other customers. Now could you please get back in your vehicle and leave? At this point, ED and EM were slapping away at midges. EM screaming, Frick off, stop biting me. Ma'am, swearing is against the site's policy. To hell with this crap, let's go. At this point, the kids had already got into the car and EM and ED followed. They left quickly, driving on the grass to get out. Guy too had been rebuilding my tent. The attendant apologized and said I can stay another night free if I want. Guy one and girl gave me a much appreciated hot chocolate and we chatted about my ride and plans. Now, unless you really love it, camping can be an unpleasant experience in and of itself. And that's before throwing in an entitled mom and dad. You know it's pretty bad when the five to nine year old children are more reasonable than you. I mean, why would you take so literally when they say like, yeah, take any spot you want to mean including the spots where somebody's already got a tent. Like only crazy people think that way. This isn't an EP story per se, and this happened around seven years ago. The cast is me, EK, EM. Plot twist, the E this time stands for embarrassed. And RD, random dude we kept bumping into. And D, my daughter. My daughter was just at the age she was able to walk by the grocery cart rather than ride in the thing all the time. Now my ex-husband was in the army and we lived on post. He was deployed so the kiddo and I are shopping in the commissary. It's the grocery store on base, for anyone that might not know. I've never baby talked or substituted words with my daughter, so as a result she has a pretty impressive vocab for a little one. On this day, the second we enter the store, as the greeter checks my ID, we hear a loud shriek. You know the kind. A telltale sign of a kid somewhere in the store, pitching a holy fit. I used to work at daycare, so I try not to judge. Kids melt down for the most random reasons. The kid may have just lost his mind because the person they are with bought the apple juice that the kid asked for. Littles are weird that way. The shriek sounds through the store again as I grab my cart. I grit my teeth and try to ignore the sound. Daughter doesn't and in her innocence asks, what's that noise? This was her favorite thing to ask at this point in her life. I'd already answered this question at least 20 times that day. I decide to redirect her. It's you asking what's that noise. I deadpan. RD entered behind me and quietly chuckles in the exchange as he grabs his own cart. D and I start shopping. I hit produce first, then the meat aisle. The shriek happens again, and again, daughter asks, what's that noise? And I answer, you asking what that noise is. RD had just emerged from the pop aisle and again chuckles at my answer. I'm fairly certain he knew what I was up to. We're growing closer and closer to the shriek and bump into RD a few more times and the same series of events plays out. I have to go down the aisle where the screaming kid is. I'm worried as if daughter gets overstimulated by all the noise this kid is making, there will be two kids having meltdowns at the same time. Thankfully the aisle we are going to is the baby aisle. I can avert a crisis by popping D into the cart, grabbing a can of puffs and letting her eat. I get her sorted. She's side-eyeing the little boy who is about her 
stage as she pops puffs into her mouth. The boy is standing in front of the small selection of toys seemingly every grocery store deems a necessity. I want the ball, he shouts. EK, you have three at home, you don't need another. EK shrieks again. Daddy, let me have one. EM is doing her best to sink into the floor. I said no, EK shrieks. Daughter staring at the scene as I try and distract her, but I fail. What's that noise? I'm mortified. EM is mortified. EK notices that he has an audience. It's you asking what that noise is. I reply cheerfully, trying to redirect. EM shoots me a grateful look. The 10 seconds of silence between us is broken when EK shrieks again. His pitch, volume and lung capacity all somehow increasing. When he finally stops screaming, D looks him dead in the eye. To this day, I still remember the look on that little boy's face as he blinked curious for a second. D turns to me. M Mom, that's inappropriate. Inappropriate. EM and I both turn red from embarrassment, though we are embarrassed for different reasons, obviously. The little boy is unfazed, but RD, as luck would have it, was on the baby aisle, and the poor guy lost it. His laughing caused EM and I to turn redder still. EM finally decided she was done trying to reason with EK. She grabs him, pops him in the back of the cart, and leaves the aisle as EK shrieks about his ball that he didn't get. Ma'am, your kid is awesome, he says, grabbing a box of diapers and leaving the aisle. Don't let it go to your head, kid. You were a holy terror in the store two weeks ago. That's when she learned that throwing a fit in a store was inappropriate. It's funny, but this story is almost an analogy for real life for adults, isn't it? Like, sometimes we do things that are actually inappropriate, and we don't really realize until we see someone else doing it, and we're like, ah, yeah, sometimes I'm the jerk, aren't I? Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.